Yo, 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 what's up guys? Happy Sunday. I feel like today it's maybe a good day to update you about my crypto portfolio, the holdings that I have and the projects that I have in mind to accumulate for this coming bull run because we all need to research the best projects, of course. I lately said in the video, it's mostly about timing and having the knowledge on how to invest. But when it comes to what to buy, actually, I'm gonna review my top altcoins, projects, notes, upcoming projects and nfts everything in this crypto portfolio right here if you like that kind of content subscribe to the channel turn on the bell notification and hit that like button because i talk about this stuff a lot i think it's very important for you to have all the knowledge you can possibly know so make this a part of your research i'm not saying by the same as i do but make it a part of your research at least. It could help you very much. So let's start with this portfolio. I'm gonna review the complete portfolio today. I'm not talk about, I won't talk about specific coins too much, otherwise it will take too long. And also a disclaimer, there will probably be coins uh, that I do not have in this portfolio and you'll be like, why not? Well, it's very simple. I, I, I don't have the money to buy everything. That's basically it. It's hard sometimes to, um, allocate your money into a good separate portfolio and when it comes to me i rather do not have more than 20 coins i don't even manage to get that low of an amount so let alone adding coins um, but i am still working on it it's still a work in progress so maybe by the time you know i'll make the next video you will see me uh, maybe replace something but i think this is mostly it <laughs> Let's start with the low risk portfolio right here. The low risk portfolio is the lowest risk it can get basically. And that's Bitcoin, Ethereum and Matic. Don't mind the percentages though. Um, that's not relevant for now because now in this market, I want to have another kind of allocation in Bitcoin that I will have in the bull market, for example. So I can say like, I want to have 50% of my uh, low risk portfolio in Bitcoin. But, you know, w when I look at the Bitcoin dominance here, uh, when the Bitcoin dominance is this low, I want to have more Bitcoin than when the Bitcoin dominance is high, of course, right? So that, that's not really that relevant for now. But I have Bitcoin in my low risk portfolio because Bitcoin is just the big daddy. It's the leading coin of all and all the altcoins bleed against Bitcoin as well. So if you do not want to be out of the market because you don't want to miss pumps, but you do want something to buy altcoins with, then Bitcoin is a great choice. Next up, of course, Ethereum. And why it's all, of course, like people underestimate how great Bitcoin and Ethereum do in a bull run, right? We get a parabolic bull run, what happens? 100x. We get a parabolic bull run, what happens? 23x. We get a parabolic bull run, what happens? 130x, right? Bitcoin never lets you down and it's the safest asset. For Ethereum so far, it's the same. And I'm very curious because Ethereum so far in every bull market, it does very well. Ethereum really has a big run and again, really has a big run. And that all when Bitcoin or Ethereum was inflationary. That's just what it is. The gas fees were high. It's expensive to you. Oh, that's the same. It's very inflationary, but still nobody gives a shit. Ethereum runs. I'm very curious to see what Ethereum is going to do now that Ethereum is actually deflationary and we had the merge coming uh, or coming, we had the merge, right? So for now, at the moment of recording, Ethereum is still struggling with this trend line. Bitcoin broke it, but I think Ethereum will as well. But I'm not that heavy into Ethereum yet. I mean, if you look at Ethereum, Bitcoin, Benjamin Cohen points this out as well. You know, it's the only asset basically that since the bear market started is at the exact same level, right? Some, some, some projects um, do something similar, but you know, BNB also, BNB, you could have better been in BNB than anything else, basically. Ethereum is one of them, Matic is one of them. For the rest, there are not a lot of coins, right? So, but Ethereum, I think it should go down a little bit compared to Bitcoin. You know, will it go down in dollars? Depends on what Bitcoin dollar does by that time. But um, therefore, I'm not too heavy on Ethereum right now. And Matic, come on, man. Um, I don't have it prepared, unfortunately, but there is a sheet of uh, companies that, you know, work with Matic, like Starbucks and like the biggest companies in the world, right? So when it comes to Matic, Matic is an insane project. It's an insane project. I don't have any Matic right now, though. Yeah, 40 or some 100. 
100 maybe. But, you know, I don't have a lot of Matic right now. Why not? Because I wanted to wait for better prices. Well, it keeps on mooning, right? I'm not FOMOing in. I'd rather scratch Matic off of my list. You know, maybe it goes to $10. Then I'm going to just scratch it off my list like, okay, fuck it, forgot it, right? Forget it, missed it. But I'm not buying these big pumps, right? I, I, I just refuse to do that. But if the market cools off and if Matic sees a big correction, then I'm definitely in Matic. Just because you are exposed to the market with upside, but not with a lot of downside, in my opinion. Then my medium risk portfolio, let's go get to that. And I want to maybe do it a little different because this way I am exposing everything all in once. That's kind of a... Uh, a shame um uh, okay yeah i'm gonna go uh do it one by one to make it more uh, more interesting <laughs> right so let me let me let me put it like this let me put it like this for you guys all right so my medium risk portfolio this is gonna be way more interesting like this all right so my medium risk portfolio Phantom, I have Phantom in my portfolio. I think Phantom is still a good layer one. And I talk a little bit about every coin, by the way, but nonetheless. Phantom is still a good layer one. It's fast, it's cheap. They have a lot of runway. They have a big team. They're out there. They over promise, under, uh, they under promise, over deliver. That's what I really like. Um, but Phantom is now not in the position where I want to buy it. It got rejected of the point where I thought it would be rejected. Not by that much, though. Well, not by that much. It had a big green spike to the downside. 30%, but it came back up as well. I'm not buying Phantom right now. I do have a Phantom position, but not too big. But Phantom is definitely one that's in my portfolio. And by the way, I will make videos about all of these coins when I will buy them exactly. Leave a comment if you want me to check out some specific coins or even some price targets for the bull run, but this is just exposing what I have uh, on my radar. Chainlink, I definitely go buy some chain. And for every one goes, every, every column goes, don't mind the percentages. These projects, shit, these projects change. My thesis changes, right? So I keep on changing my portfolio as well. That's what you should do, right? Um, but Chainlink, definitely Chainlink is one of the stronger coins as well. It came also down a lot, but compared to other projects, it's it's relative strong right also compared to bitcoin a lot of coins they made new lows compared to bitcoin well chainlink is still well around 50 percent above its low right um and i think this could be the low for chainlink bitcoin though but i don't know but chainlink we need we need a project like chainlink we need such an oracle and there's not a lot of competition for chainlink simply so they have a monopoly on that market so therefore chainlink um uniswap why well i like ethereum a lot i have a uh, i'm very bullish on ethereum long term and therefore, you need to be interested in the ecosystem as well. Where do people trade? Uniswap is the leading DEX still, right? And I think it will stay that way. Therefore, Uniswap is very interesting. They, rev they have a lot of revenue fees uh, as well. So, yeah, Uniswap is definitely on my list. I think it could do very well. Traded Joe. Why? I believe in the Avalanche ecosystem a lot. I believe in the gaming section of the Avalanche ecosystem a lot as well. Um, and I had Avalanche in my portfolio, but I felt like I have Ethereum, I have Matic, I have, uh, uh, well, more, more layer ones, uh, Matic kind of layer two, but I have more layer ones. So I feel like, yeah, why should I add another layer one? I'd rather have a position that I have, you know, I want everything. I want layer ones, DEXs, gaming, uh, everything, right? In this case, I have exposure to another DEX, right? Which is Traded Joe. Also, um, simply because if Avalanche does well, the leading DEX on Avalanche does well as well, right? And that's Traded Joe. So Avalanche is already at a $6 billion market cap. Could it go to 60? Yeah, could definitely be. That's a 10X right there. It's definitely possible, right? But way more than that, I don't know. Traded Joe, however, 80 million. This is on the lower cap side, right? This is way lower. This is 100 times as low. I'm not saying it could get the same market cap as Avalanche, but I think there's more potential price-wise in Joe. Um, and if Avalanche doesn't succeed, then I shouldn't be in Avalanche anyway. So it, 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 that's a good way for me to, uh, to look at it. Then, next one, 
cake. Cake is, uh, I, I, I will make this less. Um, I was heavily into cake in the last bull run. I am not so sure to be that heavy in it. It is the native token of the leading decks of one of the biggest exchanges. Then again, I don't see much of a use case for cake, right? Like, there, <laughs> tr um, Pancake Swap could also be and do whatever it does right now without the cake token. Yeah, you have the lunch pad and you could stake and farm, but I don't like if you if you have a token that you are interested in, you always want to wonder yourself like, why? Do people want to buy this? Like BNB. BNB has a lot of utilities. But mainly, uh, for example, what I find very interesting is the Binance Launchpad, right? The Launchpad on Binance, Steppen got released there, a lot of projects, 100 of X's, right? People really want BNB because you need it to participate right there, right? I don't feel the same need for cake. I don't feel that people need to have that token. But on the other hand, like I said, it is the native token of the leading decks of one of the biggest uh, layer, layer ones out there. And it did pretty well in the last bull run, right? So, yeah, and it's now sitting at a pretty cheap price. I, 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 however, think that it still could do very well. The next one, Quant. I think Quant is a pretty interesting project. There are a lot of goofballs out there that talk about Quant going to 10K, 100K. That's nonsense. Quant will never get there. I, I, you know, I, you can never say never. It's crypto, I know. But the chance that Quant gets there is very unlikely, right? Quant uh, was, look, I mean, this is Quant. And uh, it's, it's a big, big, big project uh, to completely talk about what Quant does exactly and their backers and everything like that. Check out Quant. But, you know, it's $140 with the all-time high of $420 with a market cap of $2 billion, rank 35, right? <laughs> there are actually people out there that say Quant will do 100 or even 1,000x or more. It's $140 with this market cap. Let's be a little realistic right here. The, the time to talk about quant that it could do 100x was here, right? At $2. Even here, 40 cents. That's, that's happened. That happened, right? But still, I think the project is really needed in, the, in this world. And it could come closer to the top 10 in the next bull run. Um, and it could definitely perform well and go to a $50 billion market cap. Yeah, it's not impossible, definitely not. Therefore, I have it on my list. It's quite low risk as well, if you ask me. Not that it fits in here, but mid-low risk. Yeah, so quant. The next one, Solana. I feel like people fucked Solana too much, uh, to be completely honest. Um, since the FTX scandal, everyone was bashing and hating on Solana. Like Solana sucks, goes to zero. It's bullshit. It's complete bullshit. It's very simple. I talked about this way more, right? Solana, it had to be sold heavily, right? Because the allocation was very bad. Is it a bad project? No, it's not a bad project. Why is it not a bad project? People like Cardano. People like Phantom. People like BNB. People like uh, Ethereum. People like Avalanche. Solana is faster and cheaper than every single one of these by far, right? So this, 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 what they do, what they're supposed to do, be a layer one, so send money over fast, right? And basically don't pay anything for it. That's exactly what Solana does. And all the other layer ones don't come close to it. It's simple, right? So of course it gets, uh, you know, a little overheated sometimes. If other, other layer ones were able to do this, man, yeah, so Solana, yeah, and it, and it seemed like there, it was $8 and everyone was scared, right? And it pumped in a couple of weeks to $27 and now everybody loves it again. It's stupid, right? Just look at the product, not at the price always. So that's Solana and that was it for this one. Then, here we go. My high-risk portfolio. I can better skip this part. Um, I'm gonna review it all in once because I'm still very much working on this and this is not accurate anymore. 
Route, I skipped that. ZCX, I still have that. Metaware, um, Metaware is a very interesting project that I really believe in for the long term. It's a high risk, high reward play. It's very low cap. It's not listed right here. I think it's like a two, three million dollar market cap. It's fashion for the metaverse. It's released by CDFI. Price came down a lot. Of course, they have a lot of token vesting and it's still getting vested. So you have to be really picky about when you are going to buy this. But overall, I think that fashion in the metaverse is still going to be a huge thing they have a very clever team i really like the project what they are doing it's super innovative what they do they release their token on binance in the form of an nft because it's easier to get listed on the nft marketplace so you can buy this on binance basically it's very creative i like what they do and it's uh, it's really a slightly high risk play of course but i i really think that if this project survives the bear market and it succeeds, then it's an easy 100x right there. So therefore, I must have this in my crypto portfolio as well. Polka City, I have a little allocation. Nakamoto Games, I have free behind it because I traded it that way that I took my investment out and I got free tokens with some projects I have that. Um, El Tora, um, I think El Tora is really underestimated as well. Uh, crypto gaming El Tora came down a lot um, from 57 cents all the way down to less than a penny it's now sitting at two cents again had a very decent pump and that's also good to see in a bear market relief rally or whatever you want to call it if a project does this 170% or more, then you know it's probably a good project because dead projects don't pump like that, right? So I always say like relief rallies or these kind of rallies are a sort of preview of what could happen in the crypto bull run. Eltora is uh, very interesting if you ask me. Chain Guardians, just a you know uh, high risk, high reward play for me. And don't buy Uno you know, as well, it's my only meme coin. Um, just because the community is really out there, it's really low cap. The, the 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 developer makes these viral videos. He's followed by CC on Binance, and you know uh, what? I don't know. Maybe maybe something nice comes out of it. Gaming, my interesting part, basically. First one, super, superverse. Superverse, really interesting if you ask me. Superverse made by Elio, uh, Elio Trades. If you follow him on uh, YouTube, one of the biggest uh, YouTubers out there. Price-wise, we're very much in an accumulation phase right now. They have released Giga Market, um, really a beautiful working NFT marketplace. Um, and I actually prefer that over OpenSea, to be honest, or Blur, or uh, I, I don't really like Blur, but you know, I, I think this is really something that could be the mainstream NFT marketplace. Um, they got the Imposterous game, which is super fun. It's a lot compared with Among Us. Uh, one of the most popular games well this is the crypto version uh so they got the game they got the nft collection they got the marketplace and there are so much i think they are working on the launch pad as well at least that was on the plans with super farm and now it's super first i have to do more deep diving into it um i really believe in this project and it's getting more low and low and low cap and i i don't believe that elio is going to give up on this anytime so therefore i need to have an allocation in that ultra uh people compare it uh, with the steam of crypto uh and um all Ultra is like kind of an underperformer still in this bear market. Um, didn't break the trend line yet. Still having problems with the bull market support band. It is in this accumulation area. Um, I, you know, Ultra came from far. It came from uh, 250 and it's now sitting at to, to 25 cents, right? So yeah, also 10X from its all time high. Do I think Ultra could go back there? If they keep on working, I think it's definitely possible. Um, Ultra is a very interesting project and I would love to see what this is going to do, but it's getting more and more low cap every time uh, I look at it. And if you are a diehard holder, it's very painful of course, but you know, overall, I think this has a good future and I need an allocation in Ultra. Falcon Forge, uh, yeah, Falcon Forge, what could I say about Falcon Forge? They, they, they don't have the most AAA games lined up so far. It's not a gala or anything, but they work so hard. They got like, they are the example of, of, of working in a bear market, right? Because 
in the bull market they already did fantastic i mean they they went from a dollar something to like 45 dollars almost 50 dollars um, and that you know that was in the period that they did not even have what they have right now right that's so nice to see this is what they can do cool nice thanks for the preview now work on everything that you have lined up and in the next bull run we'll see what the price is going to do with all that right they are working on the blockchain the decks they have the games they have so much coming uh, it's really really an interesting project and with a hundred million dollar market cap i feel like yeah it's perfect and it's been an accumulation phase for a long time it hasn't really run yet i mean folk forge is kind of you know ranging since may uh with the with the bitcoin pair it's it's like yeah it's having yeah I, I like to see what's going to happen in the next coming weeks here um but if it gets lower i'm gonna accumulate more this will be one of my biggest holdings when it comes to crypto gaming then we have metaverse index very small allocation if you don't know about it look it up mvi metaverse index is an index uh if you buy this you get all underlying type of metaverse coin uh, coins illuvium sandbox axie so if you feel like i want to have an allocation in the metaverse but i don't know exactly what you know just buy some metaverse index coins and you know if one of these pumps then this pumps like that's it's very simple uh it's a uh, it's a good way uh, to do it and it's also a good indicator how is the metaverse doing lately well not so good <laughs> but nothing is um next one spin top kind of high risk high reward play right here because i like spin top uh for what they do they are uh, initially a gamepedia so they are the wikipedia of crypto gaming if you do not know anything about crypto gaming and you want to know about some uh projects then you can look it up right here you can see the gameplay the review the information about the token you can see everything it's the, the place to go to when it comes to crypto gaming but you can also stake your tokens right here they have a launch pad they release some uh uh, projects um but it's I, I don't know i don't see a lot of development going on lately so i still keep my allocation that i have i won't increase it though until i see some more good news um because it, it's getting quite high risk high reward but it's very low cap um and if they keep on building then it's a really explosive project but they need to keep on building uh and I, I miss more regular updates with big, big, big stuff going on, right? That's not what Spintop really has for now. Um, on the other hand, if they did have that, right, then the price maybe already be like here or something, and then you're already quite late. Maybe we're just early to the party. It could be, it could be. That's the reason I'm still holding it. Next one, Gala, and the last one, by the way, Gala. Pff, yeah, do I need to tell you something about Gala? If you know crypto, you probably know about Gala. Gala is, uh, it's probably the most high cap in this whole list right here. Um, it recently had quite of a pump. Uh, if you look at, well, the 180 days, it came from one and a half cents all the way to five, well, six cents. So it did a 4X. It's now cooling off a little bit. I'm waiting for it to cool off a little more before I'm going to buy some. But I think Gala will be, uh, if not the at least one of the leaders for crypto gaming and it has a long way up to go like i mean in the last bull run it it, it went to a six billion dollar market cap it's now sitting at 300 so it's still 20 times as low actually as where it was right um and they have so much more going on right now so this is a falcon forged on steroids basically um so yeah gala then I have some other things and uh, yeah. what are these other things exactly? Well, these other things, I'm going to show you uh, what I mean by that. So these other things are S fund, for example. Um, I don't put it in my gaming watch list because I want to allocate a certain amount of money between all of these. And S fund, I have it in a separate, you know, lunch pad portfolio, but I have it. I don't have it there because I don't want to spend a certain percentage at S fund. I just want to get a certain tier with S fund, right? The more tokens you have, the higher the tier you have, the more money you can allocate in their upcoming lunches, the more money you make in the bull market because projects actually 500 X right there. Right? So I have S fund, uh, um, yeah, I talk about it a lot. If you know the channel, you know what I'm talking about. S-Fund is perfect. SNFTS, 
also by Cedify, just different use cases. It's all about the metaverse, about the NFT launchpad. It's really, really, really interesting, a really big project. And it's twice, three, three times as low cap as Cedify uh, S Fund is right now. Um, yeah, it's 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 both of them. Um, I love them. Um, then I have Engine Starter, also a launchpad. Um, I have some tokens that gives me a pretty decent allocation, and I, I I don't invest in Engine Starter because of the fact that the token might go up, right? Like I do with all of these. I uh, although it definitely is possible. Like um, if 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 you look at the market cap, like. I don't know exactly what the market cap here was, but I bet you that it's actually around, you know, 10, 10x from its all-time high, if not more. So it could definitely go up, um, but I just want my allocation to participate in projects that release, and therefore I already have the needed amount of tokens right there. Pools, same launch pad, uh, same story. Uh, I don't need to talk anymore about that. And I've got some NFTs, uh, which also uh, goes with others. I have, uh, whatever I can show you, by the way, it's not that interesting. I just started my NFT uh, journey, basically. Um, so let me show you uh, exactly. I had this NFT, I sold it for a nice profit, by the way, but my NFT is currently some bullshit right here. I've got a Chungo's NFT. It's, it's the mean coin of NFTs. Uh, I'm pretty much down on that right now. It's it's kind of high risk, high reward play. I got my Midnight Society uh, NFT, which I think is in the long run a very good one. I've got an Impostors NFT. Uh, I think this could do absolutely I like. Uh, this could go to five ETH. Uh, I've got a Savage, Na Savage Nation NFT. I, I I've got some other stuff right here. I've got this stuff and then and then by uh, uh, by uh, how, how's this called art blocks or something like that uh, I don't even know art blocks yeah so these are my NFTs and then I've got upcoming which is also pretty interesting if you ask me upcoming what is upcoming exactly these are projects that I uh, have my eyes on or run notes right so uh, gala film token I run a gala film note so that's uh, something that I already inter invested in but I don't have the tokens yet same goes with Delysium talked about that a lot as well and Maya Dao uh, last one is uh, a project that is not out yet but that's going to be the first launch pad on the SUI blockchain um, I have my Twitter notifications turned on for that because I'm definitely interested in investing once that comes out guys I want to wrap it up right here that's for now my crypto portfolio the things that I have in my eyes on the things that I already invested in a little bit if you think this is interesting like the video subscribe to the channel turn on the bell notification let me know if you want me to go more in depth about one of these projects or any other projects whatever you want leave a comment i'll be happy to help and i'll see you very soon take care